Hi everyone, this is Sarah, and welcome to my 50 Christmas Craft Series for 2019. I'll be showing you how to make 50 different Christmas crafts this year, and I hope you'll be back for all of them because we'll be having a lot of fun. Today, I'm showing you how to make four ornaments using Dollar Tree items. This is another collaboration with a great bunch of crafty gals from YouTube, and once you finish watching my video, be sure you go down to my description and click the playlist link so you can watch all of the awesome ideas that they've had using Dollar Tree ornaments. If you like what you see here, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button below. If you know anyone that would like this video or my channel, please share this link because every view and every subscriber really helps enable me to keep creating videos for you. And if you would like to see more of what I do, you can follow me on Instagram or take a look at my blog. I also have a Facebook group if you'd like to share all the wonderful things you make. The links to all of these are also in the description below. For my first ornament, I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree bulb ornament. Uh, I'm going to be using four colors of alcohol ink, and here I have red pepper, mountain rose, terracotta, and then I have their metal mixatives and copper. Um, I have my foam pad that I'll be applying the alcohol ink with, some extra fine glitter in white. It's actually called Glitz, Brilliant, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, yeah, from Recollections. And the last thing I'll be using is the Pledge Floor Care. All right, now let's get started on this. Just placing this here as a way to stabilize my ornament while I'm working. And let's get the autofocus turned off. That'll give a lot of us headaches. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Pledge Floor Care and I'm going to put a decent amount of it into my ornament and we're just going to move that around so we get a real good coat of the floor wax in here. We don't want to miss any spots. If you miss spots you're going to see it in the end product because your glitter will not stick. And once I get up closer to the top I'm just going to take a paper towel and place it over the opening Be sure we have everything. It's hard to tell with this being clear. Then I'm just going to take the extra floor wax and just pour it right back into the bottle. We'll just let that sit there for a minute. Now I'm just going to take an index card or you can use any small piece of paper and I'm just going to fold it to make a small funnel and this is just going to make it easier to get the glitter into our ornament. So I'm just going to bring it around and I'm just going to use some tape to hold it in place and I just have my blue painters tape because I had it handy here on the desk. There we go. Now we are simply going to place this into our ornament and pour in quite a bit of glitter there. All right, and there's our glitter in the ornament. And as you can see, as I spin it around, we're getting nice full coverage on this. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And this works with any color. I do like the extra fine. If you start using the chunkier glitters, then um, you don't get that nice full coverage. Although you can go back in with the extra fine and cover up any spots that are left by the chunky glitters. And that gives a different effect. And now I'm just going to shake it around to get it up toward the top so we're not making a mess here. And then this glitter... I'm not going to pour in like I do a lot of times back into my glitter container because I don't want the wax to be on it and contaminate my glitter. So for this right now I'm just going to pour this into an extra container in case we use it again make some more of these later. Alright now this is absolutely gorgeous and you can do this 
with your ornaments and at this point you have a beautiful glittered ornament you can put the top back on and you can use this to adorn your tree and you have your first ornament but I'm going to go back in with my alcohol inks now and I'm going to give this a marbled effect And there I've got my three reds down. And I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of this copper. And I'm going to add just a little bit in between my reds. I don't want a whole lot of the copper on there, at least not at this point. All right, and now we are just going to start working our ornament. And I'm just going to start moving this around random patterns all around my ornament and the more I work the areas you'll see you'll start getting some marbleization and some veining and it's a really cool look once we get this finished And there we go we have our beautiful red marbled ornament and then I'm going to go back in and just add a little bit more glitter we had a little bit fall out and then let that get sit in there set up real nicely and that ornament will be done for my second ornament what I'm going to be using is one of these oblong ornaments um, that you could pick up at Dollar Tree some twine which of course you can also get at Dollar Tree some Mod Podge, again, you can pick up at Dollar Tree, and a napkin. And what we're going to be doing is Mod Podging the napkin onto the ornament. 
So the first thing you want to do when you're mod podging a napkin is, of course, you want to decide which design you want to use, which side, and I'm going to cut that square out because one square is all I'm going to be needing for this ornament. Okay, and again, I could go for the one with the, the wood look on it, which is what I'm going to do, or you could also, if you prefer, go for this side, which is just white with the um, little trailer on it. Now that I've cut out my piece, napkins are actually two ply, and you only want to use the one ply, so I'm going to go in and carefully separate these two plies out. And it's not always the easiest thing to do. It's a little bit tricky once in a while. Ha, got it. There we go. And just very carefully tear these two plies apart. And they come apart really easily once you finally get them started. You just want to be careful not to tear the uh, design part you're going to use. All right, now we're going to set this aside for just a second. We're going to bring our ornament over and pull the cap off. And we are going to apply Mod Podge to our ornament. There we go. And I'm just going to use a fairly liberal amount, trying to keep it on this side of the seam of the ornament. So we want the back side to be used and we want the front not to have anything on it. going to lay our, actually I'm going to go backwards and lay our ornament over the uh, napkin just so I can see what I'm doing because I want it the, the uh, camper to be as centered as possible on my ornament. Alright, now I'm going to come back around to the back side because we're going to work to smooth out any wrinkles we have in here. And to help keep from tearing my napkin, I'm going to use a bit of saran wrap. And this just glides over this a little bit smoother than your fingers will. So it's easier to work without tearing your, your uh, napkin. Because it is a very thin one-ply layer, keep in mind. Try to keep that camper smooth. All right, and then we are going to let that set up and dry. Now you can see on the front right now, you can still see the wet Mod Podge through the front of it. That's okay, that will dry clear. And then I'm going to go back over it with just a bit more Mod Podge, just to kind of seal this. All right, and we're just gonna let this dry. And as soon as that's dry, we will go ahead and finish off our ornament. Now that our Mod Podge is dry, you can see how cute it is with that little camper in the back of this ornament. So we are going to go ahead and cut all the extra napkin off at this point. And this is why you wanted to be careful not to get it around to the front side of your ornament at all. You want it to have a nice neat look when you're done.
So there we go. You can kind of see now, without all that extra napkin around it, how cute it is turning out. Now we're going to go back in with our twine. And I'm just going to start hot gluing this around this edging here where the napkin comes together. And this is going to give us our finished look for this, the front of this ornament. Now you can see where we're going with the ornament. We have the finished edging around the outside and now we're going to add a little bit of snow and just a little bit of fun um, decorations to the inside of the ornament. So for this I'm just going to pull out this um, little funnel I made earlier and I'm going to add just a little bit of the sparkly snow that I have on hand. So, I'm just going to reach in, throw some of this into the funnel, okay. there we go, I think that's plenty. Alright, so now we have a little bit of snow there in the bottom of our ornament, but I have some of these little pine cones that I picked up um, either during the fall or back in the floral section, I forget, um, but I believe this was Dollar Tree as well, and it comes with some of these super tiny ones, so I'm just going to toss one of those in there just for a little bit of fun, and maybe one more. There we go. So now I'm just going to throw my top on that. And there is our cute little finished ornament with our little camper with a little tree on top, a little snow scene with a couple little pine cones in there just for fun. Didn't that turn out adorable? The made items you're going to need for this next ornament are some of these twine balls you can pick up in the floral section at Dollar Tree, some twine, and I'm using this uh, thinner twine you can pick up back in the automotive section, the tool section, and some ribbon, and a little bit of floral wire. The first thing that I'm going to do is just take a small piece of floral wire and I'm just going to use it to ad attach together um, the two small twine balls and I'll do the same for the two large twine balls and I had kind of gone through and sized them so that I had one that was a little bit smaller and one that was a little bit larger for each of these sizes because we're making two separate snowmen. All 
All right, and I'm just going to twist this around. And this is just going to hold these two two balls together here. All right, and now that I have that done, I'm going to also hot glue these um, just to keep them in place so they're not flopping around so our little snowman doesn't look drunk here. I'm just going to bring that all the way around his neck. And then we're just going to set these aside and let the glue set up. Now that the glue has had a little bit of time to set up, we're just going to take the twine and, okay, and we're going to run the twine through one of the pieces at the top here and this will be what we hang our snowman from. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull one half all the way through and then just create a knot at the top. All right now we're just going to use the ribbon to create a uh, scarf for each snowman. Okay, and I'm just kind of working it around till I get it kind of to where I would like how I would like his scarf to look and ignoring my dog. Okay, and I think right about that looks there looks good. So what I'm going to do is just add a, some hot glue to attach this. Right, but there is your basic little snowman with a scarf. And I am going to use this cute little bit of uh, diamond ribbon for the smaller snowman. Right, and there is our second little snowman with his fancy little checkered scarf. All right, there we go. And Dollar Tree ornament number three is these cute little jute ball snowmen. For my next ornament, I'm going to be using a miniature birdhouse that you can pick up back in the craft section at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using glitter and Mod Podge to decorate this. Now you can pick up Mod Podge and these glitter packages at Dollar Tree if you'd like. Um, I am going to be using some of my own glitters on here just because I have plenty to choose from. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to color the base of our birdhouse. And to do that, I'm going to go in with my Mod Podge and I'm going to carefully paint just the parts of the birdhouse that I want my glitter to adhere to. All right, and keeping my Mod Podge well out of the way of the glitter now, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to glitter the heck out of the front of this birdhouse. I'm going to go back in and uh, add some more back in where it didn't get quite enough glitter. Hoping there was some Mod Podge on there to hold it. And if you have to go back in, add a little bit more Mod Podge after this sets up, you can absolutely do that and re-glitter it. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and work the rest of the way around the base of the birdhouse using my copper glitter and Mod Podge. 
All right, now that I have my house covered in my copper paint, or my copper glitter, rather, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do the same thing with some white glitter. And this is just glitter that I had, for some reason, have in a bag. It's a larger glitter. It's not the fine glitter. Um, it's the next step up. Maybe it's a fine, not an extra fine. I can't tell you at this point. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to coat the roof and the base with this glitter because it's going to act kind of as a snow look. Okay, there's the one side, nice and glittery. And I can tell you right now, because I can still see the wood through it, I am going to go back in and add a second layer of the glitter and the Mod Podge. So what you might want to do is go ahead and paint your roof white before you go move on to this step. That way you'd only need one coating. Once all our glitter is dry, I'm going to take an eye hook and simply attach it to the top of the roof. Now lastly, I'm just going to take some of these miniature ornaments that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to decorate our little gingerbread house just a tiny bit. And there we go, our little birdhouse gingerbread looking glittered ornament is ready to hang. All right, let's take a look at how these all look, all finished up and hanging. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button as well as share it with friends who may also enjoy it. If you like my channel, hit that subscribe button, and when the notification bell pops up, be sure you hit that as well so you never miss a video. And, as always, have a great day and stay crafty.